Hi, got a very exciting video for you today, a new piece for you to learn. This video is going to show you how to play Can't Stop the Feeling by Justin Timberlake that he sung for the film Trolls. So without further ado, let's have a look at the score. You can find the score on the school website in the usual place, and I'll put it at the top as it's a new piece. Now this looks totally different to any sheet that I've generated before. It looks very complicated, but there are easy options for you for playing this piece. Let me just explain the three sections. So we have style one, which is this series of notes over here. So we have the right hand part, which can be found here. This is what you're gonna play with your right hand if you do the full thing. And this is the left hand part here that you would again play with your left hand if you're doing the full piece. So that's style one. Over on the right hand side of the sheet, we have what's called style two. And that follows the same pattern. So here is the left hand parts. And you'll notice there's what looks like a busier right hand part. Now, as well as all of those things, you'll notice these numbers. Here are your countings. So for example, my right hand part, if I'm going to play this right hand against these numbers, I would count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and I'd play on the numbers one. So it sounds something along these lines. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You'll be using your green notes and you'll notice that the notes are in piles. That means you are going to play them together. So you don't just play C, you don't just play E or G, you play all three of them. Play them together to form what is called a chord. So, for that section, for style number one, you play the chords, the three notes play together. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That takes you through all four boxes. So that's your right hand. For style number one, your left hand, you play the following. You play a blue C, as you say the number one, and then you count three. And then as you say the next number one, you play the purple A, count again up to four, and then same with F, purple, and back to the A. So it'll sound like this. C two three four A two three four F two three four A two three four. If you're feeling really adventurous, you could try putting the two hands together and the counting. So I'll be playing the chords with my right hand and this bass line, as it's called, because it's low with my left. So this is very similar to some of the work we've done in year six. If you're not in year six and you fancy having a go at this, obviously you can still try, but if you're finding it too difficult, you could just play the bass line. So I'll count myself in and I'm gonna play those four chords and the bass line against the counting. Here goes, one, two, three, four. C, two, three, four. A, two, three, four. F, two, three, four. A, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now you probably noticed that I played that section twice. That's called style one. And it's pretty empty, pretty basic sound. And it's not particularly busy. I like to play this at the very start of the song, um, when uh, he first starts singing. And I also like to play it in other quiet moments in the song. But it's up to you where you play that in the song. Let's go and have a look at style number two now. Now with style number two, you'll notice that the left hand part is exactly the same as in style number one. So you don't really have to relearn that. And in fact, if you're in maybe lower school and you're having a go at just the left hand, the bass line, you haven't got anything new to learn. So that's brilliant. So let's have a look at what the right hand does in this section. The right hand has the same counting but this time you're actually going to play the chord on each of those four counts. So it'll sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So you end up playing 16 of them. So let's hear what that would sound like with the left hand as well. Here goes. So it goes. One, two, three, four. C, two, three. No 
if you find it's too difficult to put your hands together, you could just play the right hand, you could just play the left hand, or another thing you can do if you want to try to experiment with this is take one note from the right hand and the left hand and put those together. So for example, we could just take the top note of the right hand in style one and try that against the bass line. So that would sound like this. This is the four Gs up here against the bass line in style one. So if I do that, it would sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right, now in terms of which fingers are best to use here, here are some tips. Um, if you are in year six and possibly year five, I've already talked to you about this. We talk about the five finger position. So looking at my right hand, I would label it one, two, three, four, five. With the right hand in here, for the C's, I use my thumb. Then I use my middle finger for the E's, and then the G's, my little finger. So it's a five, one, three, five position like that. So that's the way I, I tend to play it, and because that's the proper way of playing it. If you find it easier, you could try using one, two, and three. Likewise, for my left hand, if I show you my left hand, I use my thumb for the C, I use my middle finger for the A, and my little finger for the F. That allows me to play both styles one and two without really moving my hands. I can put them in position like this and be ready to play. So the C chord, if I'm doing style two, moving to the A, uh, bass line F, and then back to the A again. Okay, we'll see this in practice in a second. So that's the first part of the song. Now, where do I play these uh, different styles? Because you'll notice that style two is much busier. Well, I use style one for when he's singing, um, I got this feeling inside my bones, it, it goes electric, uh, wavy when I turn it on. And then when he gets into the sunshine in the pocket bit, that's when I bring in style two. Because it then sounds like it's building up. Now the bridge section, which is at the bottom, this fits the words under the lights until he goes, um, just imagine, just imagine, just imagine. So that's for that section, that's called the bridge. So how do you play this? Let's go back to the sheet, shall we? So looking at sheets, we yet again have a left hand part here. You'll notice it only uses three different notes. It uses blue C, it uses the purple B flats, which is the black notes to the left of B. So you don't play B, you're gonna play the black notes to the left. Um, and then we have uh, an F as well in there. So similar notes, but not quite the same. It's the introduction of the B flat that's quite complicated. So just bear that in mind. Right, the right hand is all in green over this end of the bridge, but it starts with a bit of blue as well, so you've got to be careful that you're getting the notes right. So we're going to be playing these notes here. Let me just put those right, there we go. Those notes, the D and the B flat there. You're going to be playing those as you say one, then you're going to hold them where you count two, then you're going to do the same again, those two notes as you say three, and then obviously you say four using the numbers, and then we do the same here. We're going to say one, two, so you hold those two down, so it'll sound like this. That's the C and the E. Then as you say three, four, you're going to do the same thing, C and E. And then it's the D and the B flat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now the notes change, because you'll notice there's a pattern here. We'll talk about those in a second. Um, here, in this section here, we're going to be having the E flat, which is the black note to the left of uh, E, and we have C, play those two together, same again, and then it goes up to F and D, for three, four, still counting, and it's going to be E flat and C, so then the same again, and You'll notice that there are patterns all the way through this. In fact, I would invite you to stop the video now and see how many patterns you can find in this piece. Just let you do that. And welcome back. If you have just stopped the video, I'll show you what those patterns are that I've certainly detected. We've already talked about a few of them. We've said that in style one and style two, the left hand is exactly the same, which is exciting and easy to know, particularly if you're just playing the left hand. Um, and even the right hand, the music is exactly the same, it's just more repetitive in style two. So that's one pattern. You'll notice another pattern is that you're always counting to four in this piece. That's because this time has four beats in a bar. This piece has four beats in a bar. Let's have a look at the bridge and spots and patterns, shall we? 
Well, the first pattern that stands out to me is that if we look at this section here, I don't know if I can highlight it. Will it allow me to? Yes, there we go. Those two sections there, with the D and B flats, and then the E's and C's, you do them again, here and here. So that's repetition. And then here, it seems to change. So we then have E flat and C against D and F. And then guess what? Just like to balance the other side, it repeats. These patterns are really important, as you know, from the work that we've done before. The more you can spot these patterns, the easier it will be for you to learn the music. Right, so putting that section together, it sounds like this. First, I'm going to play just the left hand. This bit down here, and I will count along as I do that. So here goes. C, two, three, four. C, two. I'm going to do that again. Sorry, I made a mistake. C, two, three, four. C, two, three, four. C, two, three, four. C, two, three, four. B flat and B flat and F and B flat. So that's what the left hand sounds like for the bridge. And remember what I said earlier. If this is too difficult for you, just play the left hand. Forget the right hand. You can do that for the bridge and play along with Justin Timberlake singing the original song. So let's have a look at the right hand now. We're going to have start with all of this music here. And remember you play these two notes together each time as you say the number. So I'll be D and B flat, you'll hear me count along. I'm just going to highlight the top notes because it's easier for me to do that while I'm playing at the same time. So here it goes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Changes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's what my right hand plays. Now, in terms of fingers, what I tend to use is with my right hand, if I go back into here, with my right hand, I'm generally using one and three, so first and third fingers, for the D and B flats. Going to two and four for the C's and E's. And then I move my hand up for the second half of the bridge. So I then use one and three on the C and E flat, and two and four on the D and F. So let's see what that sounds like. So putting it all together, remember we had the right hand and the left hand, it sounds like this. I'll play it, play it and count it. One, two, three, four. Looking at all of this, this is all very exciting, but you've probably spotted that this is not the tune that you are learning. What you are actually learning to play is the accompaniment. So I have done this in exactly the same key as Justin Timberlake sings the original song. So when you have learned it, you should be able to play along with the original song. So remember what I said, I tend to use, uh, let me just bring it up again, here we go, I tend to use the style one for the first bit, um, where he starts singing, and then when he gets to the sunshine in the pocket, I bring in style two. Then for the bridge, under the lights, up to where he goes, just imagine, just imagine, just imagine, I use the bridge section of the piece. And then when he goes into um, uh, the next bit, um, so just dance, 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 can't stop the feeling and all of that, I use style two because I quite like that because it's quite active. So we're now going to have a quick look at um, how you can begin to put that all together. Right. Here we go. So I'm going to play you my special keyboard I've created. So here it goes. Let's watch this. So you'll notice this is style one. First part of the song. I'm watching it on another screen. There we go. And this is the first part of the song. Right hand and left hand. And here comes style two. Sunshine in my pocket. So this goes on for quite a while. Notice how short the right hand notes are. And then here's the bridge. As 
those C's and E flats, the D's and B flats, the C's and E flats. And it's coming round now back to style two. Here's style two for the chorus. There you go. Okay, that's pretty cool. So, what you just saw there was the notes coming down, as you've probably seen on YouTube before. Um, so I've managed to put that into the same program that other people are using, so you can actually see what's going on there. You might have noticed some odd colours as well. So those odd colours were showing you the different hands. If we watch it again, um, we'll watch it one more time, um, and you'll notice that the colours are um, showing you which hand is which. So if I just rewind it, we have... Um, for example, in this scene here, you can see that the yellow is for the left hand and this orangey colour is for the right hand. You've got to remember though that um, what's really important is this is nothing to do with the colours of your keyboard. It's to do with the colours to show you your hands. So when you're watching this video back, and remember you can always go back and see any of these moments and watch it again, you um, can see which hand is doing which. So we have the orange for the right hand and the yellow colour for the left hand. Now, I'll say it one more time, if this is really too difficult for you, just try playing the bass line. You can play the whole song like that. And all of the rest of the song is basically different mixes of the style one, style two, and the bridge. Just remember that whenever he sings the words under the lights and up to the Just Imagine bit, that's the bridge section. So you can begin to work out the structure of the song and think about how it's put together as well. Right, to close, I'm going to put the video back on of the recording. Um, of the keyboard, so you can um, have a go at playing along with it. Um, also, just notice in the timing in the YouTube video when this is, so if you want to come back to it, this is the ideal time for you to kind of come back to, so you don't have to watch all the stuff I've said before. So, here goes. Let's watch it from the beginning, and good luck. Well that's the end of this video, that was Can't Stop the Feeling, I hope you enjoyed that. It's quite a lot of work for you to do and it's different things for you to try out. Don't forget to go on YouTube and listen to the original and you can sing along with it. What can be uh, one of the things you can aim to do is actually sing the words at the same time as playing and maybe play along with Justin as well in the original video. So that will give you plenty of things to be uh, getting on with. Until next time, stay safe.